First up, we've got an interview with our director of um, Care of Rescue Wildlife Programs at Nantes Mal, Mr. Nick Marks, who I'm sure many of you know. So without further ado, Nick, if you're ready. Hi, Nick, how are you doing today? Never better, thanks. Excellent. Okay, so first of all, could you tell us a little bit about the history of the uh, Wildlife Rescue and Care Program at Nantes Mal? Sure. Um, in the year 2001, uh, while, while then Wild Aid, uh, implemented the Wildlife rapid, rapid Rescue Team. And in doing so, we realised that we needed to do something about, something constructive about the animals that we rescued, because not all could be released immediately. Nong Tamao Wildlife Rescue Centre was started by the Cambodian Forest Administration in the, in the year 1995. And because they didn't have the capacity and the resources to manage the place effectively, it needed to be upgraded a little bit. We realized this, and especially as we were bringing many, many more animals in due to the Wildlife Rapid Rescue Team, we started working in full cooperation with the Cambodian Forestry Administration. Uh, great, great cooperation. And between us, we've now uh, implemented what is really perhaps the best wildlife rescue center in Southeast Asia. Um, Many animals that we rescue were released again. And we have implemented captive breeding programs of uh, endangered and not so endangered species. And many of the offspring that we have bred at Nong Tamao, uh, we can release again um, and repopulate forests that have lost their wildlife. For example, the gibbons that we've released into, into Angkor have been uh, captive born. So really we've been, we've, implemented a holistic approach to the uh, uh, cracking down on the illegal wildlife trade. We don't just do the rescues or the confiscations. We also do the uh, captive care for animals that need it and hopefully release in the future. And of course, if we can't release the animals again in the future, uh, we'll look after them for the rest of our lives. There are many that have become too tame or too damaged to be released, but we'll, we'll care for them. Our proud boast is that no wild animal will ever be turned away and all would be dead without our intervention. Thanks, Claire. Okay, so that's a bit of background about Tamao and the Wildlife Rescue Care Programme. So for people who can actually come and visit us in person in Cambodia, there's a very special experience that they can go on called the Behind the Scenes Tour at Nam Tamao. So can you tell me a little bit about the tour, when it started and why? Sure. Um, we implemented the, the tour program at Nong Tamao. I should say actually that we call the tour team, we actually call them the Wildlife Conservation and Awareness Team. Because they do an awful lot more than just tours of Nong Tamao. There's education, um, aware, general awareness of, of everything. And they've done a fantastic job. We implemented the, the Wildcats in, in around five years ago because we really weren't raising enough money for the, it's quite an expensive program caring for rescued wildlife, and we really weren't raising enough money to do the job as thoroughly as we, we wanted to do. So we implemented the team, and because the team has always been so great, immediately they made serious, uh, imp they raised an awful lot of money. For, uh, for just all of which went back into obviously supporting the team, the cost of the team, taking guests and on to mount, but every, every extra, everything extra went straight back into caring for our animals that we've rescued. And they've made such a huge, made, at the time, made such a huge impact in all the years that they've been in. We've implemented the team. They've done truly a fantastic job. And guests, uh, it's fair to say, I think every year we win the uh, TripAdvisor um, Award of Excellence, um, demonstrating how great the guys have been, all based on on comments uh, from people that have gone on our tours. But unfortunately, COVID um, has had an impact on obviously guests to uh, to Cambodia. So the tours, unfortunately, now really are not. We're struggling uh, with the loss of that income. So because the tour team's great and Claire and all the team at, at, at Wildlife Alliance. Uh, we're thinking of other ways we can try and help support uh, our rescue, wildlife rescue and care programs. Um, and that's why we're here today. 
Wonderful. Thank you very much, Nick. And um, on the on the subject of, of budget for um, the the programs, we're actually going to have a little bit from for later to say, you know, how much the, the animals are eating per day, so you can imagine the costs involved there. Um, let's go back to Alicia, who is actually one of the um, tour guides. So if you do come on the behind the scenes tour, you'll be meeting Alicia and uh, Zoe Indeed, who is our program uh, manager on the behind the scenes tour programs. So I'll say goodbye, Diana. Right Yes, uh, we can. I'm going to go to see him reap, see the given to be written and call. So, bye bye. Thanks very much. Thanks for all your support. Bye bye. Thanks, Ben. All right, you're welcome. Thanks. Hello, I'm back. Bye bye. Bye, Nate. Bye, Nate. Thanks, Nate. Thanks, So, um, next, actually, um, we're going to go over to our colleague Liz. She was meant to be here today, but she is not. Hopefully she is uh, able to track uh, when we meet it. Oh, no, wait. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you can tell it's the first time we've done this, can't you? Um, so we're going to go over to our colleague Liz, who's going to speak to you a bit about the Stand by Wildlife campaign that we've been doing on social media recently. <laughs> Hi, um, so we have have a little bit of technical difficulty this morning. I'm signed in as Claire, uh, but obviously I'm not Claire because Claire's on screen and I'm at home with a cold. Um, my name is Liz, I work for Nick and I do fundraising for the wildlife rescue and care programs. And um, because we've had so much difficulty with the COVID and with tourism being closed completely, uh, we decided to launch the online fundraising campaign this year, Stand by Wildlife, to raise money for wildlife rescue and care and fill some of the big uh, budget gaps that we've had as a result of the loss of in-person tours. Um, and I'm very happy to report that we have raised um, $84,500 as of Monday night. And I saw the list of registered participants and I know that many of you have donated to the campaign and donated to the Wildlife Rapid Rescue Team Fund and the Care for Rescued Wildlife Fund already. And thank you so much. It's been amazing. And this is exactly what we needed to fill the, the big, big gaps in our budget as a result of the loss of tour income. Um, as you can see on the screen here, we have the Duke Langers. And those of you familiar with the campaign know uh, that UB, the first Duke Langer that we rescued, is the face of the campaign. Uh, Duke Langers are critically endangered species. They're very difficult to raise in captivity because they're primarily leaf eating and they have very delicate um, intestines. And we've been very proud to successfully hand raise four of these this year. Um, and so if you get a chance to come to Phnom Penh, Mau, um, you can come and see them once travel resumes. Uh, they have a whole big enclosure now over by the elephants. Uh, so really hand raising them has been one of our greatest achievements. And if you guys haven't had a chance yet to donate to the campaign, um, if you can, uh, we would love to get additional donations. I think that um, Dave is going to put the link to the Stand by Wildlife campaign into the chat. Um, or if he doesn't have a chance, I'll do it uh, on the following slides. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we are really looking forward to the virtual tour with you and telling you a little bit about the release work later on. And uh, enjoy the virtual tour. Thank you so much. ជម្រាបសួរខ្ញុំជាមួយមាលីវុតធ្វើអង្គការសម្ព័ន្ធមិត្តសត្វប្រៃក្នុងតំណែងហើយប្រហែលជាអស់លោកបានឃើញនៅ
ถ้าปีกาได้หลังเกี่ยบานปีกาเป็นทีนี้นบอออกลูกเนี่ยนงตรลับตัวช่วยดอสัตว์ดังออกลูกปุ๋ยตามระยะกาปล้อจำในประจำทั้งไงปะสมจีบาลกาบุกัดปุ๋ยนังกาดอเล่นจมูกสัตว์ได้เมลคันสองสลบเอาตัวรู้เนื้อขนมไปทอมจีบุ๋ยสมอคุณสำหรับกาเตสนะเนื้อขนมวิดโอคลิปดอกไฟนี้ยังสังคมท่าหนังจูบเนี่ยจีบมวยปุ๋ยขยมในขนมการเวทีตัวสนาจอสัตว์ไพรในเปลือกหางหมูส่งมาคุณจะให้เล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟังเรื่องราวของพาร์คและเล่าให้ฟัง And uh, that's why we help um, the government to enforce that law and uh, give them a little bit of, of um, support in doing so. So Phnom Penh acts as our our main hub for the rescue, rehabilitation, and also some release as well. Um, there's also two other NGOs that work there. There's Flora and Fauna International and Free the Bears. Are we having audio issues again? No, audio is fine. Cool, no problem. So um, you heard Vit there talking about um, you heard Vit in the video talking about the park and and he was a bit at the park as well. He's also here with me today, so he's going to talk to you um, about some of the food and what goes on at the park with the food. Uh, Do you want to say hi? Yeah, hi. I'm Bodhi. I'm uh, a part of the uh, wildlife team, wildlife conservation and awareness. So uh, sorry, maybe wait for this slide. So the next, the next slide with the elephants. With the, elephant. so the first stop at the park is the elephants, and that is the first stop on the real tour as well. So it's the the real deal today. And uh, we have four elephants at Phnom Penh. We have two females and two males, and um, we'll have a little video about their their story and their their rescues. <laughs> Phnom Penh Wildlife Rescue Center is home to four elephants. Jamran, our oldest female, was rescued from elephant-human conflict. Villagers poured battery acid on her head when she was feeding on their crops. After attempting to rejoin Jamran with her herd, we made the difficult decision to bring her to Phnom Penh. Sakor is an adult male elephant, also rescued from escalating conflict with humans. Our team was called to intervene by the Forestry Administration after he began feeding on sugarcane and villagers tried to scare him off. The large bull became aggressive, chasing traffic on the nearby road, damaging homesteads, and endangering the lives of local inhabitants. For the safety of Sakor and the villagers, we brought him to Phnom Penh. Sakor and Jamran now happily share an enclosure together. Lucky was found as a six-month-old calf wandering alone in the forest. When she arrived to Phnom Penh, she was cared for by Mr. C. Tang. For two years, he never left her side. The two still maintain a special bond, and Lucky has grown into a beautiful adult ambassador elephant, now 21 years old. <laughs> However, in 2015, Lucky suffered from EEHV, 
a virus that kills 80% of elephants in the first 24 hours. For nine months, dedicated keepers and veterinary staff provided IV treatment through the large veins in her ears. Her immune system weakened, her ears became infected, and we had to cut away the damaged tissue so that the bacteria did not enter her bloodstream. Lucky is one of 15 elephants known to have survived this illness, and we are overjoyed that she is still with us today, cheeky as ever. Chuk is a young male elephant with a prosthetic shoe. We rescued him after he was found as a weak orphan calf, with his foot missing from a snare wound. We treated Chuk's foot and hand raised the little elephant, who was also adopted as a younger brother by Lucky. As he grew, we had the Cambodian School of Prosthetics and Orthotics create a shoe for Chuk. Without this shoe, Chuk would suffer from complications to his spine and muscles as he grew. Thankfully, he accepted the shoe and immediately ran off and played with Lucky. Each of our elephants eat over 100 kilograms of food a day. It costs about $65 per day to feed all four of them, a diet of mainly grass, leaves, barks, and roots. Unfortunately, the pandemic has limited our ability to raise funds to feed our elephants and the other 1,300 animals rescued from the illegal wildlife trade that reside at the park. But you can help. Stand by wildlife with us this giving season. Thank you. So um, we have uh, four amazing keepers at Phnom Tamao in order to keep up the best care and uh, husbandry and make the elephants all very, very happy and healthy. This is the first main thing, um, main kind of um, facility we have to provide for the elephants. The all, elephants all have four pools that they love to uh, play in. Water is an essential part of uh, Pakidam life. Um, they drink about 200 litres a day and they also love to get in it and cool themselves off. This is a video of Sakor uh, having a great time. That is actually a tractor tyre, so you get some kind of idea of scale there. It's not a car tyre, it's a big old tyre. He's so, so strong. Uh, he stands about 2 metres 70 tall, so he's a big boy. Um, yeah, we can go to the next one. So the pools are over three meters deep, so they can actually fully submerge. Um, that's Jamran there. So Jamran is probably the, we would say, the greediest of the four elephants. She is the most uh, food motivated. So she uh, has a lot of uh, things in her enclosure to keep her mind occupied, but they're usually based around food. So the one on the left there is a treat barrel, a bit like a treat ball that you buy for your cat or your dog. It's got holes in, the keepers put peanuts in there, carrots, bananas. She has to spin it around to get them out. And on the right, there's a, a pile of tires and that's um, steel and concrete with the tires piled on the top. So she can forage in there for food. And also uh, she shares an enclosure with Sakor. So um, Sakor can uh, lift them up. Um, if he uh, wants a bit of a workout, he can lift them up, take them off, put them back on. Kind of thing as well. Okay, do we have any questions about the elephants? I think Claire was kind of orchestrating the questions. Okay, if you have any questions about the elephants, please fire away um, in the chat on Zoom or Facebook, please. We'll just have time for two because we're obviously running a bit behind because of our technical issues. Um, Lucky is the only elephant that is, uh, we can trust to walk around the uh, outside of the enclosures at Plum Tamau in the forest. So she gets to walk around twice a day, just like you walk your dog. The keepers walk Lucky there's around. There's some Facebook questions. And, um, so she can also forage from the forest as well. Uh, but the other elephants do get the forage from the forest as well, don't worry, they, 
still get the variety in their diet, the keepers actually go out and, and take browse for them and bring it back to them. Okay. I think we're struggling to find the questions. Lots of comments. I think some comments. Lots of love for the elephants. I saw somebody was called I Love Lucky. That's amazing. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Oh, yeah. We can take a question from our technical support, Dave. So, um, how many elephants do you have in total on this site? So, Dave said, how many elephants do we have in total at this site? So, we have four elephants in total. So we have two males and two females. And they're all rescued as a result of human elephant conflict. Good question. How many have been released? How many have been released? released in the last few years. So that's that's a great question. So unfortunately, um, because of the deforestation situation in Cambodia, we can't release any of these elephants back into the wild. And because of the situations where they've been rescued from, obviously Chuk wouldn't be suitable for rescue because he has his prosthetic shoe. So um, if in the wild, there would be no one to change his prosthetic shoe. Lucky is far too human uh, orientated. And Sakor and Jamran would just go back to raiding people's crops. And that wouldn't make them many friends or make Wildlife Alliance many friends either if we were dumping out elephants that are just eating people's crops. Yeah, great question. Okay, I think we will go on to the next slide. No, there's a, there's a question. Oh, there's another question. Great, uh, just the last question. Are there still wildlife? in Cambodia. Is uh, there any current information on populations? Okay, fantastic. That's another great question. So it was from Facebook and it was, are there any wild elephants in Cambodia? And is there any estimations of population? I think Vuk can answer that one. Yes, the estimation of the wild elephant in Cambodia forest, about 500 to 600. Yeah. Okay, so we can move on to another fun one from oh, Nikki. She wants one. to know Thank which you, elephant is your favorite. <laughs> My favorite elephant is Jamra. Yeah, the same as me. The same. <laughs> and lucky too. She's very greedy, but she's very cute. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, cool. We can uh, move on. So Vut is going to take you through some uh, special requirements for the animals. Yeah. Okay, so what do the animal eat? So I will tell you a little bit about the park too. That we have over 1300 animals at the park at Plumtama Wildlife Refuge Center and over 120 species. So all the animals at the park, they eat different diets. So the diet and we have different kind of them like primate, like langur, tuplangur, gibbons, monkeys, and elephants, and other animals. So it's simple like silver langa that you saw from the slide that they need a special, need a, need a, okay, okay. <laughs> sorry, need a special diet that they need a human infant formula or goat milk because goat milk is low fat, so it's good for them. And they need organic food. It's good for digesting system as well. Okay, we will stop at the tiger. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, so cool. So we have two tiger at the park, a male and female. Animal is total and female is fiery. So both of them, they eat meat and eat uh, chicken meat or like beef. And for total, it's five kilogram and fiery three kilogram. And they eat Monday to Saturday. And on Sunday, they have special food for them. I just need like the supplement for them, like uh, bones 
or chicken egg. <laughs> they find it sound like chicken egg. <laughs> so they can give to put the whole chicken egg to them and then they can roll, they can play and they break. It's good for mental stimulation too. Yeah. So yeah, and we will move to the next one for the Sanda pangolin. Yeah, very nice, very nice photo. <laughs> and you can see the three ants. <laughs> Yeah, in front of or uh, before the tail. And uh, we don't have the Sanda pangolin at the park, but we have four of them at the wildlife release station. You know that uh, the pangolin, they are critically endangered because they hunt them for traditional medicine for their skin or their blood. Sorry, uh, for the scales and for the blood for the medicine. So we so lucky that we have four of them and we keep them uh, for breeding and then we will release them uh, in uh, the forest. And uh, they eat by three, three ants that I mentioned. So they got uh, 200 uh, grams each of three ants per day. So one kilogram of three ants around $10. And the penguin eat very expensive food. <laughs> yeah, I feel okay. yeah, more than me. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. figured out yesterday that 200 grams of ants is 25,000 ants. Oh, so 25,000 ants per day. Okay, yeah, a million, yeah. Dollars, over a million per year. <laughs> I think it was nine million per year. Yeah, nine million per year, wow. a lot. Yeah. Okay, and this otter. Yeah, so awesome, so pretty. Yeah, so yeah, they have a. Uh, please feel free that uh, we will ask you guys uh, some uh, like one question about otter too. How much fish does an otter eat a day? So yeah, we have the poll, so you guys can click and answer, and we will show you that uh, what is the answer from you guys. And yeah, the author, we have uh, 28 authors at the park and we rescue them a lot because you know that uh, some people, they feel that the author very adorable and really cute that they want to keep them as pet. But no, it is illegal in Cambodia. And the author is wild animal. They should be live in the forest. I mean, they should spend their time in the river in the stream, natural habitat, they should to catch the fish and live with their family, not with human. Right? And the author very, very smart and really sharp. This. And if you want to test everything, they use their teeth to test it. So if you have author in the house, so maybe the author can be test something, can be the kids as well. So no author in the house. So it is illegal. Yeah, so yeah, they eat fish, they can be eat smell and crabs sometime for their enrichment. And yeah, we will see the results on the poll after that. So we'll, sorry guys, sorry. we couldn't get the poll to work. So if you just post your answer in the chat. Stay in the chat. Yeah. And then we will we will announce it. Yeah, we apology about after this. the video. Yeah. Put the answer in, in the chat during this video and then after the video we will announce the answer. ຍຸມານຊມຸກຄືການຂອງຂອງການຫວາຍແລະອາສົມພົນມັນສັດໄປຍຸມານເມື່ອຖ່າຍໂດຍສັດສະຫວາກະບັດນີ້ມັນມີ
Hãy về thế ngay dương miền bản lai nâng phai chơ bản thêm xâm rập ôi phụ kê xì phong đài nhóm sầu lan của kênh nè Sốm ổ cồn, nâng rít rí khăn nông tị vía biên nợ ổn thả rạ chết. We go save ourselves. Everybody oh. wants to know uh -huh. how much fish and all to eat in the day. Okay. So I think you can see comment or no? Oh. oh, so the guess is we have. Yes. Two kilos, 1.2. It's <laughs> nice, thank you. Yeah. So day the day is one kilogram <laughs> of fish a day. And again, that I have mentioned, a uh, bit the snails and sometimes with crabs as well. Thank you for your answers and thank you for watching and pay attention with us. <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna go to the nursery. We're gonna see some baby animals. Uh, yeah, nice. So this is a fully behind the scenes section. This isn't open to the public at Phnom now, so if you come on the actual tour, it's an uh, exclusive uh, view. So it's another exclusive part today. Um, so many of the residents of the nursery are um, orphaned because of the illegal fish meat trade. So the parents are killed and sold for food. And then them themselves are sold into the illegal pet 
traits. So they're a result of two, two very uh, awful traits that happen, unfortunately. Um, but each of them, um, this guy, sorry, on the screen is a yellow cheeked gibbon, and that's exactly what happened to him. A gibbon would always be holding on to mum, so you're not going to be able to get a baby gibbon without killing the mum first. Um, but the keepers are really, really good at raising them and often they will provide specialist care and stay overnight as well to give feeds up to every two hours for that animals. So sometimes they are a bit uh, zombie. Sometimes you go to the, the nursery section and you can tell that they had a really hard night, but they love it and they're really, really good and, and talented guys. Okay, next slide. Yes, please. So in 2020, we had over 160 babies through our nursery area, um, all different um, shapes and sizes, birds, otters, primates, carnivores, uh, deer species as well. And um, they each require specialist care in different ways. So the keepers have to be very adaptable and um, we have to sometimes do some research if we have a, a brand new animal that we haven't had before, um, like the Duke Langers, for example. We, had never had them before. Okay, so sometimes, unfortunately, the animals do come in in such a weak condition already, it is too late. Sometimes people try to keep them as pets, they feed them a very unsuitable diet, and it is really detrimental to the animal's health. So no matter what we do, unfortunately, sometimes the animal does pass away. Obviously, if the animal was left in the wild, it would have a much better chance of survival. And that's what we try to we want to get there before we want to stop people uh, taking them in the first place. Okay, next, yeah, thank you. So these are Indian roller birds. We do get birds um, quite frequently for our nursery section. If a bird uh, isn't an adult yet, we can't really sit back into the wild, so the keepers do have to look after it. They are the most noisy residents at the nursery, um, and we do commonly get them, most commonly get them kind of May, June, July, when there's nesting season. So um, uh, that's when our nursery is the most noisy. Um, the poachers will actually steal chicks straight from the nest. So vulnerable, helpless chicks, they just take them out, straight out of the nest uh, from their adults. Um, so it's really, really nasty. Uh, but happily, we do manage to raise most of them to uh, fledglings. And once they've fledged, we release them into suitable protected habitats. Okay. okay, so I think we have one more nursery video that shows you a few more animals that we have at the nursery as well. Do we have the nursery video? Maybe we don't have the nursery video. Okay, so we don't have the nursery video today, so maybe I'll just tell you a little bit more. So this is a, a interrupt. Um, and as you can see on the screen, we're asking for more questions. So while I'm telling you a little bit more about the nursery, please feel free to fire in your questions. If you have some more questions about the nursery at all. Um, what is the most difficult species to care for from a very young age? I see it's a question we've, come, uh, we've got through Facebook, but do you want to tackle that one? Okay. Which the most difficult, difficult species? species. Yeah. That, uh, I think that uh, Alicia mentioned a few seconds ago about Duke Langer, that she mentioned that it uh, one that very difficult for us because we just uh, uh, rescued them like last year, last year, and we got four of them. That we didn't know much about Duke Langer because Duke Langer is a special uh, uh, leaf monkeys or macaques that they eat uh, special food that we need to provide them um, like uh, UHC milk, like uh, ultra uh, heat treatment and mix with the uh, human uh, infant formula. And we, we need to make sure that everything uh, clean properly and we not allow uh, other keepers just only two of them that can uh, touch or look after them. Mm -hmm. And the rest of them not allowed to touch because we worry that can be uh, transmit disease through yeah. the fruit yeah. when they want to feed them too. And they prefer green leaf and not much fruit and they need the uh, organic uh, leaf or fruit as well, yeah. 
So they're, they're very vulnerable to that other diseases that the animals can carry. Yeah. I'm sure during the COVID uh, times, we all know about zoonotic diseases now and diseases that can transfer between species. So the Duke Langers are specifically uh, particularly vulnerable to the other diseases at the park. Yes. Um, and one more question. Oh. oh, no, I'm sorry, it's gone. Are there currently any cats in the nursery? Are there currently any cats in the nursery? That's a great question. Sorry we haven't featured many cats. We did squeeze the tigers in there, <laughs> um, but we do have some other cat species at the park. In the nursery at the moment, there is a leopard cat. Yes, there. yeah. And the funny thing is about this leopard cat, it was actually sold to somebody as a Bengal cat. So the domesticated kind of almost wild cat species, but still uh, one that's legal to keep in your house. And they were doing the right thing, taking it to the vet to get a vaccine and everything. And the vet said, mm, actually, this isn't a Bengal cat. You need to hand this over because it's illegal to keep this one. This is a leopard cat. Yeah. Uh, so they actually donated it to us, which is very, very nice because I think they paid $400 for it. Um, so yeah, it's very, very nice. They did the right thing and handed it over to us. But, um, say no. <laughs> yeah, say, um, yeah, say no. To keep my like, as pet yeah. in your house in Cambodia. I don't think you know. Yeah. Mm. So uh, that one will be released. Uh, probably up to now, actually. Uh, we have a lot of Papork fans. Papork <laughs> is our clouded leopard. That's great. Thank you, uh, Mackenzie. Um, we're glad you enjoyed the tour and, and meeting Papork as well. Okay, so if we're done, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna speed up a little bit. So um, next, we're gonna talk about some achievements that we had in 2020. Yeah, cool. And we're going to go over to back to Liz then to talk about that as well. Hi, can you guys hear me again? Yeah. Uh, okay, it looks like I'm spotlighted. Okay. So the this has uh, been a great tour of Phnom Tamao. And in addition to Phnom Tamao, we just wanted to talk a little bit about our release work because many, many animals at Phnom Tamao just spend a short period of time at Phnom Tamao and then they get rehabilitated and then we can release them. Um, so in 2020, uh, we got over 1,900 new animals that arrived at the park. And then we were able to rehabilitate and release over 1,600 animals. Uh, we had a huge year last year because the Wildlife Rapid Rescue Team had rescued a lot of animals and many of them were able to be rehabilitated and released. So we have three different release sites. Um, one of them is the 2,300 hectare park around Phnom Tamao Wildlife Sanctuary. There's also this uh, protected forest. So many of them that are um, from the dry forest get released there. We also have a wildlife release station up in uh, Kokong, which maybe some of you have even visited if you've come to Cambodia before. We do have overnight guests there. So that's for more rainforest species. Uh, the pangolins in particular do better up in uh, Kokong in the Cardamom Mountains. And then we have also a release project at Angkor, uh, at the Angkor Temples, uh, which a lot of people don't know about, but is actually a, a very interesting program that we have. Um, animals were mostly extirpated from the Angkor Temple complex at the end of the last century. Um, so we have an active program there. Originally, it started with the reintroduction of pileated gibbons. Uh, but this year, we had some really amazing releases. We had the first ever time that we've released leopard cats there. Um, we have, took a pair uh, up there and released them. There's a photo from the camera trap of them leaving the enclosure. Uh, at the end of 2019, we released an otter family. And in early 2020, the parents gave birth to two new otter pups. And you can see there's a picture that somebody took of the otters wandering around in Angkor, and they started to use it for advertising for their hotel. We found that picture posted on Facebook that somebody had used. Um, so obviously, animals are interesting to everybody, and they have started using the otters, have attracted a lot of attention. Uh, and then we have, of course, the pileated gibbons uh, on the far right of the screen and that's a mother and two of her babies uh, so the first set of gibbons was released in 2013 and another uh, set was released in 2014 and both of those parents have now three uh, infants each so we have a total of six wild board gibbons 
and uh, four um, adult gibbons that were released. And in 2020, we released a third adult pair of gibbons. So there is a short video of the release of those gibbons um, if it's ready to play. Um, and you guys can see the actual release of our third pair of adult gibbons in Angkor. It's one of our big achievements from the release aspect of our work this year. On July the 1st, 2020, Wildlife Alliance in conjunction with uh, APSARA and the Cambodian Forestry Administration released th our third pair of gibbons back into the Angkor Archaeological Park in Siem Reap. We'd been acclimatising these gibbons in a release cage in an in a, in a area, selected area within Angkor uh, for over a year now and we feel they're ready to uh, experience the forest. So uh, we released the gibbons. At the beginning, the male left fairly quickly um, and stayed around. He re-entered the enclosure several times, trying to encourage his uh, lady, Pompoy, to leave with him. But in the first day, she was uh, too nervous to leave the enclosure. The following day, she left. And now both gibbons are going in and out of the enclosure. Um, enjoying the forest, uh, but uh, maintaining security within the enclosure. They've been in the enclosure for a very long time. We of course continue to place supplementary food for the gibbons twice every day, as we did when they were in the enclosure, to ensure that they stay in a safe area and remain uh, cared for and safe. We of course also continue monitoring, monitoring them every day to ensure that they don't encounter any problems and so that we can help them or, or solve any problems that may occur. So far, the program's gone very well, and we hope that this third pair that we released in, at the beginning of July 2020 will uh, go on to uh, have babies and be as successful as the other two pairs of gibbons we've already released. Okay, so that was just a, a short video about the release um, so that you guys could see uh, at the end of the day, that's ultimately our goal is to actually release um, all of the animals that possibly can be released so that they can go back into the wild. So that uh, brings us to the end of uh, most of what we're doing today. Um, I just wanted to mention again the Standby Wildlife campaign. Uh, you guys have seen a lot about the Duke Langers. If you haven't had a chance to donate yet and you, uh, and you do uh, have the ability and the desire to support us, uh, we are hoping to raise another $65,000 by the 31st of, of uh, January to meet our goal. Our goal was $150,000 uh, to raise for wildlife rescue and care because we're so short of money because tours are canceled and nobody can come to Cambodia. Uh, so if you guys have the ability to participate, uh, thank you so much. And if you want to support us on uh, Facebook by sharing our messages uh, with your networks, with your friends, every little bit helps. Uh, we're really piecing it together uh, to keep the animals cared for and fed and be able to release as many as possible. Um, so we're going to put the link in the window one more time for you guys. And we're going to go back to Alicia and um, Vut in the studio and Claire and uh, and wrap up the tour. Okay, so yeah. I don't know. Uh, so we're going to go to the last slide now, and we're going to wrap up. I'm glad you'd like to come back in. You can push up a little bit, <laughs> and you want to share a mic? Yeah, I can. Cool. So we just wanted to say a final Hello. thank you to everybody for coming. Yeah, thank you and, so much. And another sorry about the kind of technical difficulties. <laughs> This is our first time, so um, we will, uh, if we have to do it in the future, we will iron out, iron out any uh, technical issues like that. Um, and perhaps if it's possible, Dave, could you spotlight Liz as well? Can you spotlight Tom? Yeah. <laughs> so we can bring Liz up to say bye to you.
Hi, thank you guys so much. And also some of you have visited our wildlife release station as well. So thank you very much for following along. Thank you for following on Zoom. Thank you for following on Facebook as well. And YouTube and Petron. Yes, yeah, and we will post on YouTube and Patreon yeah. uh, this week too. Um, and we'll try and get back to you with any questions that we couldn't answer. And we'll also put links to our Standby Wildlife campaign in the chat. So if you'd like to make a donation, um, you can do so there.